Hi friends, Dean here with Escape to Gaming. Today I want to take some time, I just did a video yesterday with my E3 impressions, and I got some interesting feedback, good and bad. I lost about 10 viewers, subs, or whatever over it. I gained a few in the process, but lost some, which happens. Every time you say anything that's controversial, you can expect, you know, some feedback from it, you know, good and bad. Uh, some people like it, some people, you know, are just going to hate you for it, and are going to let you know that they don't like your way of thinking, you know, so. Uh, I, I get the impression a lot of people think, oh, God, is just so negative. He didn't like anything of E3. He does, obviously doesn't like games. God, is there anything that he does like? Well, I thought I'd take a time and show you uh, my collection on the PlayStation 4 alone. And I'll quickly also show just a quick video clip of my 7th gen collection just to show you that <clears throat> it's not that I hate games. In fact, that believe me, I'd have a lot more PlayStation 4 games if I had my way. So I'm going to quickly go through this just to kind of show you what I have. Now, most of these I have are physical games. There are a few of them that are pretty much digital, uh, you know, downloads, which I got as a gift uh, Christmas or so ago. So I'll quickly show those. I'm going to start off with, you know, uh, Far Cry 5, which is a great game. Now, I started to play it just so I can unlock the menu so I could go in and play the, the, the Hours of Darkness DLC with the Vietnam expansion, which is down here. Um... So I started the campaign where you go through and, you know, the helicopter and the whole deal. Uh, I, and I stopped it because I didn't really want to get into that game yet. I, I really wanted to play the this Hours of Darkness DLC, which I think looks really good. Um, it, it, oh, this is something else. I thought I was going to show some pictures of it. Uh, I, I, I have the season pass because I got the gold edition. And it, it looks really good. So I'm anxious to play that. I'm going to try to play that this week. <clears throat> My back is feeling a little bit better, you know, today. I've I, got to get to the point where I can sit on the couch for more than an hour, and then I can, you know, sit there and put a couple hours into it, because I'd really like to get through that hours of darkness. But Far Cry 5 looks good. I, I know I'll have a great time with it. It looks like a big game. I need a big block of time and space to go through that. <clears throat> I've been playing a lot of this, this Horizon Chase Turbo. I, I get this game mixed up, but... It's very fun, very vibrant, very colorful, very addictive, and it's one of the best downloaded games that I've got. I got this other one on sale not long ago, Riptide Grand Prix, uh, I think it's called Renegade. <clears throat> Quite good. I, I played the first uh, few races on that. Really a fun, uh, yeah, graphics are kind of average, but <clears throat> a really fun racer, kind of like the old Hydro Thunder game on the Xbox 360, because I got the Gold Edition, I got Far Cry three classic edition. It's not technically a remaster. It's pretty much just like the PC version of the game for consoles, but it looks really good. I, I, I'm almost tempted. I want to play the Hours of Darkness, and I'm tempted to play this before even playing Far Cry 5, because I love this game. It's, it's so good, and this reminds me of how good we had it just a short while ago with video games. Red Faction, I just recently downloaded this. I had Red Faction 2. I finally bought this one. They had a sale on it. I'm dying to play this. My friend Adrian was doing a, a started to do a gameplay walkthrough of this, and I was really enjoying it. I've watched a couple other people play it as well. Wonderful PlayStation 2 game. Need for Speed Payback. I've got a lot of hours, maybe 15 to 20 hours in it. Uh, I'm doing a lot of races and grinding and leveling up before kind of going through the entire campaign. But I really love the game. I miss the boat. Apparently they had these hidden cars, which I missed along the way. I get a 70 uh, Cooter or whatever. I, I missed it. I didn't realize that there was a limited time those cars were available, so I'm hoping they're going to release those down the road. They're still trying to support the game on, with the online community, but at least this one I can play and enjoy offline for hours on end, and it's a great game. It's one of the best Need for Speed games I've ever played. I really love the game. There's some DLC, a few car packs. I might get one of them. I do like the, the 78 or 77 Smoking the Banded Trans Am, which is one of the DLC things which I, I might get. This is a fantastic game. I put some. I put a whole week into this. Paradise, uh, Burnout Paradise Remastered, to me it's games like this really sell me on the, the concept of remastered games. When you take a game that's so fun and you can play it on a modern console with a modern controller with a you know 4K TV and everything, it's a beautiful thing. I'm really happy with this. This I've got about maybe 10 hours back into this so far. This is a great game. I go to this. Sometimes when I only have like a 45 minutes or so to play, I just play a story mission at a time in this. 
I go around, I drive around, and I, I know where all the hidden guns are. So I pick up all the extra Uzis and shotguns. I go back to my hideout and hit my save thing. And, uh, and I'm kind of leveling my, you know, I'm leveling my uh, Tommy guy up on this. I love the graphics of this. I'm thinking of painting a mural of this, something similar to this with the palm trees and this logo in my garage, which I'm getting ready to do before I go on vacation for the summer. Uh, Oblivion, or I keep calling it Oblivion, this uh, Abduction, which is kind of a spiritual successor to the Wonderful Mist series, a fantastic game. I'm very happy with this. I'm several hours in. I got to the second world or section, and I don't just I, I just get out of it. I just I jump around with the games. It's part of the problem. Call of Duty World War II. I've had this installed. I just haven't played the campaign yet. Uh, Dying Light: The Following Enhanced Edition. Wonderful. Now I had the original Dying Light installed. I just deleted that this morning because I realized I had two of them. This is a great game, and I pray that the new Dying Light 2 is an offline game as well because it's a wonderful game, and they're supporting it for those that like the online gaming, which, again, I'm not opposed to. I'm only opposed to online gaming if it sacrifices an offline single-player uh, you know, experience in the process. Then I, I, I can't get behind it, and, and I won't. Uh, Eleanor, uh, I had to get this. I bought this the day it came out. I even rebought the strategy guide, even though I already had it, because it had some of the VR missions, and I'm planning on getting the PSVR down the road, maybe this year. Now that I'm not getting... I just discovered yesterday, one of my viewers mentioned in the comments, that, Dean, you can't even save your backwards-compatible progress on the Xbox One without going on the cloud <laughs> to save it. So there was only one reason to get an Xbox One. So you know what? Maybe I won't get an X. Maybe we'll just get an Xbox One S just so I can play the backwards compatible games. And then I heard that, and I, I blew it for me. I'll never get the Xbox One X now, which is really tragic, because I'm an enormous original Xbox and Xbox 360 fan. No one, that I've, been, I've met very few people that are as passionate about the original Xbox and the 360 like I am. I don't have the biggest collection, and I'll show my, my 7th gen collection in a few minutes here. But um, anyway, this is a great game. And to replay this, and I don't know if it's, I think it's in 4K maybe, or I, I don't know. It looks really good. I've seen some good videos on it. I can't wait to get into this. This Mud Runner looks fantastic. I've seen some good gameplay of this. I bought this digitally. I, I, I think it's a, do I have it digitally? Yeah, I think I, yeah, I bit this one digitally because it didn't have the little disc. Uh, and then there's some new DLC for this as well, which I'm interested in. Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. I'm very anxious to start this. In fact, I'd like to get the season pass because I would be interested in playing all of these other segments as well. Even though it has some SJW shit laced throughout it, it still has the fantastic New Order uh, Wolfenstein combat, which I really do like. And, I, and the Machine Games, at the end of the day, just makes a very visceral, violent game that you can get into. And, and, and I like that. So I, I want to support them. It just has to be a concept that I can get into that it's not you know going too far but uh, Drive Club I <clears throat> I bought it for like twenty dollars which includes all the DLC it's incredible I've already played um, a couple cars that I like through this it's very nice I have all the DLC it's an incredibly beautiful smooth running game on the PlayStation 4 Pro very impressive Rogue Trooper Redux this is one of my favorite original Xbox games in fact I think that in my next shipment of games, my friend Jeremy found me this game, finally, the original Xbox One, which I had years ago. Really excited about having the original Xbox One, but even more so, I, th this one I want to sit and play through. I really love this concept, that they're bringing these old games back. I really wish they'd make the Judge Dredd, um, I don't know, something with faces of death, or death versus dread, or whatever it's called, for the original Xbox, which I have. I'd love to see them do a remake of that. But anyway, I got this Rogue Trooper Redux. Very cool. Um, I did buy the Modern Warfare Standalone Remastered. I, you know, initially I, wasn't, I didn't like the direction of the Modern Warfare games, but I went out and bought all three of them a couple years ago and played through them all back-to-back -back in one week. All three of the Modern Warfare games. Really good. I was really impressed at how good they were. I'm glad I gave them a chance. This looks fantastic. Now, I remember playing the split-screen maps with my nephew. This is one of our favorite games to play the, the split-screen maps on. Fantastic. Uh, Air Conflicts Double Pack. I just got this for Christmas or something, I think. Um, the Air Conflicts uh, Vietnam, I had already played, had, and played on the PlayStation 3. I really loved it. 
So I'm happy to have it back. It's not the greatest flying game, but it, it's fun. The Vietnam one is fun. It's very unusual. Baja Edge of Control, you better believe I rebought that. I love the Xbox 360 one. I rebought that recently a year ago. I've been playing this one again. I love the racing in this. This is one of the best off-road racing games. It's a shame that we have to go back to old games to have fun, but thank God PlayStation 4, and I know for the Xbox One, they're making a lot of these games available, and I, I really like that trend. This Bro Force was really good. I, I'm really enjoying this. I, I got a ways into it. It's so cool. Eventually, you keep unlocking cooler and cooler characters. It, it's like every uh, trope from the 80s and action films in a very fun little cute platformer. Lots of explosion. Everything just blowing up constantly. It's kind of the chaos of that. What's that? Luft, Luftenhauser? I, I, can't, I can't remember the name. There was an airplane game a couple of years ago that came out. Luft Browsers or something like that that I loved. It had that kind of kinetic chaos in it. And that's what that game has. Red Faction 2, I absolutely love this game. This is one of the games, along with the first Red Faction, that sold me an FPS games. Anxious to play that. Just Cause 3, I started playing. I played the opening scenes, and then I started doing some of the missions once you, you know, Rico got down on the ground. Uh, it looks and plays fine. As long as I can continue to play it offline, I'm anxious to play more of it. I'd rather play this than the new one with the crazy storms and everything. So I have only the vanilla version. I don't have any of the DLC, but I, that's a... Yeah, this was a digital game. was a gift. Uh, Grand Theft Auto V, I bought the day it came out. I, I have over 100 hours in the 360 port. I got maybe five or six hours back into this one uh, playing as not Michael, uh, um, God, black fellow in it in the beginning. I, I can't remember his name. But it, it's great. It's a great game anyway. Um, Destroy All Humans, this one I started to play really good. One thing about Sony is they've got a lot of these older PlayStation 2 games that they brought back available on the PlayStation 4. They don't have the backwards compatibility, but what they do have is games you can buy and own, that you own and can play them offline, trophy support, 1080p, many of them, widescreen, everything. It's a fantastic thing. I love Destroy All Humans. I even have the strategy guide for it. Uh, Star Wars Racer Revenge. This was. They have a series of... There was three of these that were exclusives for the PlayStation 2. Eventually they made... Jedi Starfighter available for the original Xbox, so I get all three of them. I got a Star Wars Racer Revenge, really good. This is a fantastic game. Looks gorgeous on this port. They had it for the GameCube. Unfortunately, they didn't have it for the Xbox. They had it for the GameCube, the PlayStation 2. Um, I don't know if it was on anything else or not, but I, I'm thrilled to have this. I'd like to get a find a strategy guide for this. Beautiful game, wonderful jetpack action, great graphics in 1080p. It looks fantastic. Jedi Star Starfighter, I've actually got maybe four or five hours into this. This is really fun. It's a fun flying game. Some of these older games are kind of tough. They're, there's a real learning curve to them, and it's just fun to re-immerse yourself. Uh, this one I got as a gift, Batman Arkham Knight, with all the DLC. I've got maybe three or four hours, not too far into this. I actually got this Return to Arkham Asylum uh, game. I started playing the Arkham Asylum. I maybe four or five hours into that. That game kicks ass. I was having so much fun. I was kind of curious to try this with the Batmobile, so I jumped from that to this one and got a ways into it. I think I did get the strategy guide for this, but I don't have it for the others. I had the two PlayStation 3 versions of that, but I got rid of them. But I kept my Arkham Origins, which I still have. Um, this next one, MX versus ATV Supercross Encore. I have this, and I got a lot of DLC extra open world uh, tracks or, or map packs for this as well. This is a fantastic off-road dirt bike game, kind of like the old uh, MX versus ATV Alive or Reflex. In fact, it's a lot of the same kind of recycled tracks, I have a feeling, in, in areas, uh, but a little bit better graphics. Still looks a little dated, but it's a lot of fun. What can I say, Fallout 4? i got 144 hours in this. I even have the DLC. I've got the uh, Far Harbor DLC, which I downloaded. I want to get more of the other DLC, the Automatron, and there's another one. That, I think it's called Nuka World. I want to get those as well. <laughs> this game I love. And it's why it's so tragic that the new one is online only. I know what people are, oh, yeah, well, they've got Elder Scrolls online. It's not like they haven't done, Bethesda hasn't done this before. I don't care. This game is known as a solo RPG game. They're taking it in a direction. You can't even use VATS. 
it's going to be a chaos similar with people trolling each other, blowing each other people up with nukes. I mean, it's going to be a mess. But, you know, maybe they'll make another offline fallout. We can only hope. But if the new one does well and is successful because they can cash in on a battle royale, you know, multiplayer mode, they'll probably do it. Mad Max, I got 270 hours and four attempts at getting through it because there was a game-breaking bug that destroyed three of my playthroughs, and I had to, I kept replaying it, thinking that the next game game through, maybe I wouldn't get that bug, but I kept getting the bug. Patch number four took care of it because I wanted to get through the whole game when it first came out, so I was impatient. I wouldn't wait for you know the fourth patch to fix it. But this game, I could play the if no, I would get a PlayStation Four Pro just to play this game. I could play this one game or Fallout Four the rest of my life. And I'd be happy. I, part of me, and I complain there's not a lot of new games, but the games that I do have here, I can invest hundreds of hours in. So it's not like I don't have games, or, you know, I naturally want new things. You always want something that's new, and I'm no different. I want to play a new experience as well. You know, this, this is a great game. I love the remaster. Some people picked it all apart. To me, it looks fantastic. Flat Out 4, Total Insanity. This is a great arcade game. I don't think it's quite as good as the um, Ultimate Carnage on the Xbox 360, which was a remake of Flat Out 2, but it's a fantastic game. Highly recommended. There's a lot of heavy grinding in this, replaying tracks and cars and stuff over and over, but it's very good and a very deep game. There's a lot of content in this game. Worth every penny. I bet you could buy it for the cost of lunch today. Uh, Batman, Arkham City. Oh, I see. Maybe there's two different ones. I've got Arkham City. I don't know what this other one, Arkham Asylum. Okay, they're, they're both, you can play either one. Okay, maybe they're off two different discs, I don't know. Uh, Destroy All Humans 2, I haven't played any of it yet, even when I had the original Xbox version, uh, which I have, I just never played it. Dead Island Retro Revenge, uh, came when you get the definitive edition for the PS4 of Dead Island. You got this as kind of a little side-scrolling, brawling game. It's kind of cute, kind of like an old Streets of Rage thing. It's not bad, I play a little bit of it, it's fun. Uh, Carmageddon Max Damage. This is really fun. This I actually got three or four hours in one night. I put, I, split, I stayed up late at night playing this and really got into it. And did I lost? I, I kind of ate it a few times, but there was one big match that I won near the end that really hooked me on it. I got quite addicted. I really like this game. It's kind of buggy and the mechanics aren't the greatest, but it has merit. Trials Fusion. I just raved about that in my last video. A great game. I've got all the DLC for that. I love it. Dirt 4, uh, not bad. I haven't got too far into it. I've just messed around with the game. I don't care for the procedural, the, the procedurally generated track design. I prefer things done by hand, uh, you know, for the, that are dis engineered by designers that are, that are building good level design or track design. But it has good cars. It's just, you know, it's kind of a, a step back from Dirt Rally, but it's still a good game. Far Cry 4, I got about 35 hours in it. Still have the second half of the map left to go. But I've uncovered every single loot item on the first uh, island or the lower half of the map. I'm quite a ways into that. I really love that game. It's so good. And I'd like to finish it. I would like to see how the end of it comes out. Assassin's Creed Black Flag I started years ago. Um, I really love the graphics. I love the ocean. And the way he can platform and stuff, it's good. I just need more time with it. It's just, I, I get over, what happens, I get a lot of games, but there's only a few of them that I'll really sink the mega hours into, and that's those are the ones that kind of get, get all my attention. Thief was a gift. I think my friend Cameron gave me that. I really appreciate that. That looks good. I like that as a stealth game. I like to play it. He also gave me the Order 1886. It looks good. I installed it. I haven't played it. Alien Isolation, I got maybe three hours in it. I thought I was going to have a heart attack. I, 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 part, and that's one of the things I want to mention about games, too, is that <clears throat> there are lots of people who play games. There are a lot of people, oh, I don't care, male or female, it doesn't matter to me, Dean. It's just, I don't care if you're playing as a fox, a baboon, a female. It's just, it's like, it's almost, I think some gamers, maybe they have more of a, a, a mental way of looking at the games. It's more of like a Twitch base, just a way, a, a mental eye hand eye coordination challenge. They don't care what they're playing. They don't really get that immersed within the worlds or the roles. But for me, I really do. I really get into it. I suspend my disbelief. I feel like I'm actually in the world, whether it's a Vietnam or this. 
This game, because the graphics were so good, and the production values were so good, I, I thought it was going to have a heart attack. I, I literally had to stop, and I loved the game. I like to buy all the DLC. I got the Nostromo Day One Edition as a couple extra missions. They've got a lot of other really good DLC which I've watched videos. I've watched an entire walkthrough of this game. That's how much I liked it, and even that was in, uh, intense, really intense. Uh, I think it's maybe because I'm a right brain person, but I really get into games a lot more so than others, and that's why, for me, not saying for you, but for me, it matters who I role play as and how I get into the game because that will really determine the level of immersion and how much I get into it. And man, believe me, that game Mad Max and Fallout 4, I, I felt like I was in those worlds for hours and hours and hours and end because I love the world and I love the character creation, all of that so much. It's important to me, not to everyone, but to me. Not everyone sees video games the same way, and I'm quickly realizing that. Dishonored Definitive Edition, I love the first one on the 360. I, got a, I never finished it, but I got a ways into it. Really good. I love the mechanics, the blink mechanic and everything. I had to get the Definitive Edition. It's really good. I even have the tarot cards from buying, pre-ordering the um, 360 edition, which I still have. Last of Us Remastered, I played it on the PlayStation 3 initially. I started to replay it on this. The graphics look fantastic. 60 frames a second. I don't know what the graphics fits in 4K or not, but it really looks good. And that's why I love this game. I just didn't want to see it go down a road. I want more Joel. But, you know, <clears throat> the head Naughty Dog Deb, if you've done the research and you know how he feels about guys like me who, who play these games, uh, it, it makes it really hard. to. to I, you, you can't help but see the game for being contrived. He really has infused his personal views. He intentionally made the L.A. character gay and all of that to fit his worldview. That's what he wants. That's what he wants to see. And so because I know that, it's hard for me to play. i got friends of mine that feel the same way I do. I don't want to give that guy a dime of my money, but if I can play it free offline, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that then. You know, It's like, dude, just boycott the game on principle. Why play it at all? I don't want to experience something that I know is contrived. If I know that someone politically is manipulating something uh, for their own reasons, and especially if you know that they hate a particular kind of person and belief system that you have, it, it makes it really hard to play the game. Let's just be honest. I can tell you what you want to hear, or I can, you can, I can tell you how I feel. Uh, since I started my channel in 2012, I have always been honest and upfront uh, I get a lot of reaction because of that. That's why I'm not invited on podcasts, because I'm too controversial. I, I, I speak my mind a little too much, and I think people are afraid of that. That's why I'm no longer invited on the Angry Centaur Gaming podcast, or a lot of other ones for that reason. Uh, they know that I felt very strongly about the PS4 Pro, so when I was going to be on the third Angry Centaur Gaming podcast, which was about the PS4 Pro, and everyone wanted to sit and bash it, because I know that they're kind of anti-Sony. Uh, I was magically, all of a sudden, I was going to be supposed to be in that podcast, and then at the last minute I wasn't invited. And I was kind of shocked and frankly hurt by it. But then I thought about it. Well, that's right. They're going to talk about the PS4 Pro. They want to bash it and talk about, is this really needed? We really need this half, you know, halfway into a console generation, another PlayStation console and all this stuff. That's where they want it to go. And you know, this is why I'm not invited on podcasts, because I speak my mind. And I had nothing but praise for the console. I loved it. And they don't want those kind of opinions. I, I, I feel bad saying that, but that's just how it is. If you want to be a big YouTuber today, you've got to be cool, man. You can't ruffle any feathers. You want to kind of go with the flow, say what's popular. You want to kind of embrace all gaming. Uh, you know, you'll pick apart a few things, especially the things that, you know, uh, the Battlefront 2, you know, you got to pick that apart because, after all, it's microtransactions, so we'll bash... That will kind of state the obvious and all that. But God forbid you speak your mind. This is what we're not seeing with YouTubers today. It's just tragic to me. It's tragic. So yeah, this is why you won't see Dean on, on podcasts. Because I'm, I'm, I actually have an opinion. In a world where you really can't have that anymore. You know? You could be ostracized like that overnight. Because you dare to speak your mind. Now, I have some people that respect me for it and other people that are irritated and they'd like to see me shut my channel down. I'm quite sure of it. Oh, well. Hotline Miami, really good. I had the PlayStation. In fact, I have it for the PS3 as well. 
Really a fun game, very addictive. I, I don't do very well at it. I get killed over and over and over, but it's very fun. Doom, um, Cameron from Industrial Gamer got me this in the strategy guide. I'm really excited about this, playing this. I just watched a wonderful, I don't know the name of the documentary, but it's a documentary all about how they made the new Doom. I, I got really pumped to play it. Uh, they're going to have a lot of this type of id gameplay in the new Rage 2, providing it's offline. You know, still no confirmation yet on that. Killzone Shadowfall is one of the four original PlayStation 4 launch games that I bought at launch, even before I got my midnight launch PS4. Uh, sadly, I've never played it. I've had this thing installed forever. I've never played it. It looks good. I love the Killzone series. I love Killzone 2 and 3 on the PlayStation 3. I just never got to this one for whatever reason. Mankind Divided, I've never played. I bought it at launch because I want to support the dev. I love this universe. I like the Human Revolution game. In fact, I'm trying to find a PS3 version of the director's cut of the Human Revolution for my collection. Uh, Ghost Recon, I've got maybe an hour or so on this. I started the game. It's good. I went through the character creation. Uh, it has very deep character creation, which I really like, male or female, which I like. Uh, you can go and pick out all the guns. You can dial the guns in. Huge open world. You can play it offline. You can play it co-op online. That's multiplayer done right. And that's why I bought that game at launch and supported it, even though I really haven't played it, because I like to support the devs that are making the types of adventures and games that I like and I know many of my friends like. Sniper, Ghost Warrior 3. I love the first two. I have the first two. The second one I played, the first one I haven't played, but I do have it. This I haven't played yet. I think I even got the season pass for this, I think, if it has one. Uh, it looks good. It got some really bad mixed reviews, but I, I think it looks good. I really am anxious to play it. Uncharted Collection, Nathan Drake Collection. I bought this. I gave When I gave my PlayStation 4 to my friend Clint, I gave him... I wanted to give him at least one PlayStation 4 game, so I thought, even though I had that at launch, I, I, I gave him my Nathan Drake Collection, and then I rebought another one for myself, because it's so damn good. I, I love the... I played um, the first two Uncharted games on the PS3 and absolutely love them. I've never played the third one, so I like them all, and I can play that. I think it's a 60 frames a second. It looks really good, much better than the PlayStation 3. I had to have it. This game looks and plays great. I've got a lot of hours in the first one in the 360. I've got maybe three hours restarting this one, 60 frames a second, much better than the Xbox One version. It looks great. It plays great. A, a very impressive game. I, I love Tomb Raider. This is woman in games done right. It's always been a woman. They don't all of a sudden put a man in Tomb Raider. Should they put a man in Tomb Raider all of a sudden? People would be outraged. No, you don't fuck with it. Leave it alone. Well, then don't put a woman in gears. Don't do it. Leave, certain things just leave what they are. Let, let battle, Battlefield be a, a real, relatively realistic military set. Don't, don't make a crazy alternate history political correct statement out of it and then hate the people that don't buy it. Well, if you don't like the game, then don't buy it. Well, you know what? I won't. Thanks, Dice. I'm glad that you're you're honest with your opinion because I'll be honest with mine. I won't buy it. Metro Redux, an outstanding investment. These two games on the 360 were good. My God, they look so much better. They redid the first game with the uh, Metro uh, Dying or Dying Light or whatever this last light uh, game engine. Really looks good, and a lot of the game mechanics and HUD and stuff, very cool. I've got that, plus i got extra DLC stuff for it, because I pre-ordered it. Um, Bioshock Infinite Collection, that was a gift from a good friend. I'm very happy to have that. Uh, the only one I've ever played was the the third one, which is in there, and it's really uh, Bioshock Infinite, which I thought was pretty, pretty impressive. So, yeah, there's a Bioshock. I guess this one you get Bioshock 1 and 2, and this one's Bioshock Infinite, I, I guess. Uh, Sleeping Dogs Definitive Edition, one of my favorite games. My God, we had it so good in 2012 and 2013. My wife still has uh, footage in her phone of me rage, raging <laughs> through playing this on the Xbox 360. This looks amazing. It has all the DLC. It's a wonderful world of Tokyo. I like driving on the other side of the street. I love the martial arts. It's so good and so visceral. A really good story. These kind of games, I want to see more of. I love this. I would have, and they were going to make another one, but you know what? They focused on fucking multiplayer and fucked it up. And now the game is dead in water. It's so sad. We could have had a wonderful sequel to this. It's tragic to me. 
Call of Duty Ghosts I've played through not once but twice. I really like it. I like it. A lot of people are like, yeah, I don't like it as much as a lot of the other ones, but I still had fun with it. It was like the last really good Call of Duty before I got into the crazy wall jumping and double jumps and the, all the space stuff. You know, it's just way out there. Uh, this is one of my favorite games. I would get a PS4 just to play this game. Sniper Elite 3 and 4. Outstanding. I have all the DLC. I played through all the DLC on 3 and 4. Very, very good. I, I cannot wait to replay every bit of this game and the DLC and Sniper Elite 4. The good games I really like, I play all the way through and I'll play them again on a harder uh, difficulty. Desert Rangers, a Wasteland 2 Director's Cut. My God, my wife got me this for Christmas. This game is tough. Like a permadeath deal. A very cool game. One of the best RPGs I ever played on the C64. I love this game. Need for Speed Rivals, one of the first four games I got from my Midnight Launch PS4. Very good. I like it. It's not my favorite Need for Speed game. I don't care for the pro progression system. It's really not much in the way of customization, but still very fun. And I can drive my Challenger on it, which is a lot of fun. Dirt Rally, one of the best 8th gen racing games, par none, ever made. Very challenging. This game I've mastered. A lot of people just can't. This is the Demon Souls of racing games. I, I can do this standing on my head with one hand. This game is a great game. It's for real drivers that understand real cars and real driving physics. A fantastic game. I absolutely love this game. I've, I've done a lot of races in this over and over and over. It's so good. Battlefield 4. I never quite finished. I got pretty far into it. I like I like to restart it from the beginning because I've kind of missed the whole story. I really like the story in this. I love the graphics. Now, DICE did a great job in this. It's a great game. I wish they'd do more games like this with a good single player. I like Battlefield 3. I've got it for the 362. I love it. Wolfenstein, The New Order, a wonderful game. I, I absolutely love that game. One of my favorite, probably top three games for the 8th gen. I absolutely love it. Uh, Firewatch, I love. I played it all the way through the, the last level, last section. I had to stop to have dinner. I only had like an hour left, and my game save corrupted, and it wouldn't let me play the game. I had to start the game all the way over, so I wouldn't finish. I never could finish it. I had to go online and watch the last hour of it on YouTube, which was just so anticlimactic. What a terrible bug. That ruined the game for me, but I really enjoyed it. I would, I would welcome more, and I think they're working on a new game, the studio right now, Walking Sim or whatever you want to call it. It looks good to me. I liked it. That was worth every penny. This one was, too. I played this all the way through in like two nights. Lifeless Planet, a fun, strange, quirky, it was a PC game. They finally ported it to the consoles. I like kind of a minimalist look to the game, but very fun and very atmospheric. Very cool. I really like the game. This is outstanding. My wife was even blown away at how good this looks. 4K, 60 frames a second on the PS4 Pro. It's, it's like a tech demo. It really looks fucking good. A lot of tracks, a lot to unlock in this game. I'm only maybe three hours into it. It's like there's endless content. This is a great game. You get your money's worth of this puppy right here. Metal Slug Anthology. This was on the PlayStation 2. I had to have it. I bought it when it was on sale. I've, I still haven't played it yet. I think I went through and started to play the first level of one of them. It looks really good, really good. Rhyme looks good. It looks like a really fun, just kind of a really chill, low-key, kind of take your time, kind of like The Witness or Mist in a way. It has a nice little story to it. It looks good. I really like this game. This one I, I like to play. I haven't played it yet, but I've done watch a lot of reviews of it. I really like this. In fact, I think Carrot and Angry Centaur Gaming reviewed this, and that's what sold me on the game. That's, I went out and immediately bought it. Uh, Sniper Elite 4, I, it's so good. I don't like the x-ray vision all the time. I, w I guess maybe you can toggle that on or off, I don't know. But aside from that, I really love this game. They, they, they tried a lot of new things in bigger environments, more ways to approach your targets with the fourth one. I mastered this, and it wasn't just enough. I could have snuck through and passed a lot of the Nazis. Every single level, I went out of my way to kill every single Nazi on every map. Every one, even though I didn't have to. I killed them. I did all the DLC, except for the very last section of Inception. There's the very third part I was waiting to download. I just downloaded it recently. I haven't played it yet, so I just need to play the final, the third section of the DLC. 
and I'll have that completed. A wonderful game. My God, I love Sniper Elite so much. It's so gory and so good. Speaking of gory, Bulletstorm Full of Clip Edition. I have a feeling that Rage 2 is kind of emulating, and it's pretty obvious by looking at the videos, they're emulating the fun factor that you have in this. This game is fun. I got the Day 1 Edition, the full clip that has... You can play as um, Duke Nukem, which a lot of people didn't like and picked apart, but I think it's cool as shit. I haven't started playing this yet. This one is be tempting. I, just looking at it now, I could sit and put it in today and play it. I, I'm, I'm actually home today because my customer texted me early 6.30 this morning and canceled uh, her appointment. She had to work today. She said, Dean, I can't we do it tomorrow. I go, okay. So I'm here making a video. PlayStation Now, not interested. Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. This one was a gift, a digital download. The PlayStation 4 version it comes with all the DLC, extra missions, all this stuff. It supposedly looks really good. I've seen lots of reviews of it. I'm anxious to play it. It looks quite good. Deadly Tower of Monsters. Another one that carried it. Angry Centaur Gaming sold me on this game. And I bought it. Uh, <clears throat> it look, In fact, I've got maybe... Two and a half, three hours. I started, got a ways into it, and man, I love the verticality. It's so funny. It's got a great sense of humor. It doesn't take itself too seriously. It's very, very cool. Very retro in a way, too. Very, just a great film. If you love old Hollywood movies like the old Buck Rogers films, or you can see the strings and the spaceships and shit, it's perfect. Uncharted 4, oh my God, A Thief's In. I don't know how many hours, four or five hours into this, I'd say. I'm guesstimating. I, I did a, I made a video about how blown away I was. Of course, you couldn't see the HDR. You couldn't see how great it looks. But on my TV, this is just like a fucking tech demo. Unbelievable. A reason to get a PlayStation 4 and especially a PS4 Pro. This is a great game. Very, very good. I, I'm anxious to, to play more of it. I just, I, I gotta get, I, I jump all over the place. I gotta sit with one game and see it through. I have like 80 HD with games. I'm just jumping all over. Twisted Metal Black, I've had this for the PlayStation 3. I finally bought it for this. It had, and then this I've got maybe a couple hours in. This game is a lot of fun and it looks and plays great. It's a great example of a PlayStation 2 game. Perfectly done. Great resolution. It's never looked and played smoother than it, than it does on the PlayStation 4. Worth every penny of the 10 or 15 bucks I paid. Every Penny Battlefield 1, I did the first two missions of, really liked it. Very, very good. Uh, I, I, I need to finish it. I'm not a big World War I fan. Maybe that's why I didn't stick with it. But I, I'd rather play the World War II Call of Duty game, to be honest. But it looks good. and it, it, Very good graphics. And I like the war story thing. It's kind of nice. Little segments with a personal story of different people in it. If they would continue that with a new one and not force a bunch of crap into it, then I might be open to it, but again, I'll have to wait and see the reviews. Battlefront, the first one I bought only, and I bought the Deluxe Edition once I knew that they made the skirmish modes offline against bots. Then I said, okay, now I'll buy it. And I can play it offline right now. And I guess it has a PSVR uh, mode as well. Sadly, the fucking DLC, they won't make it for skirmish mode. So they got this wonderful Death Star and Desmond and all this stuff, but not for you, Dean, not for offline players. You've got to go online to play it. See, they're clearly, they're aiming it for all online, this giant online, uh, you know, new universe, and it's going to be a stream service, and that's where it's all going. Uh, Far Cry Primal, another one that Carrot and Angry Centaur Gaming sold me on. I had zero interest because they removed all the guns from it. But I watched all of Garrett's videos on this, and uh, it was uh, amazing. It really looks good. I love the premise of it. I've got the Apex Edition, which has, like, all the fucking DLC and everything. I'm dying to play this. This is a good game. This I have played, Wolfenstein the Old Blood. I never finished finished it. I got up to where the zombie thing was just starting, and I, 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 it looks really good. I need to get back to it. I don't know why. I should at least finish this before doing the new Colossus. This game is awesome. It's kind of like a return to the Return to Castle, which I, which I really like. Mafia 3, I've got maybe three hours into it. Really good. And now that they've patched it and fixed it, and it looks much better in the PlayStation 4 Pro, they got to change the resolution. The lighting doesn't look all weird looking anymore. This looks and plays great. I, 
and I even have all the DLC because I bought the season pass when I bought it at launch. A very cool game. I, I really want to support these devs and finish playing this adventure. This is a game I need to finish. I love the Mafia 1 and Mafia 2 so much. The Warriors, I, I had to have it. I, I started playing the original Xbox version on my, on my uh, Xbox that's not modded. Uh, <clears throat> And then I saw that PlayStation Store was going to have, so I bought this. I paid full price, 15 bucks for it, worth every penny. Even got the strategy guide for it. Dead Island Definitive Edition. This is really good. They used the Dying Light engine, redid it. There's some things in the environments you can't interact with like you could on the, the original Dead Island, but still, it looks much. To me, I think it looks a lot better. There's more detail in the environments. You get a lot of the more fluid graphics. It doesn't have all of the screen tearing and the issues that the first one did on the 360. I really like it. Sadly, on this one, you get the physical version for Dead Island Edition, but the Riptide comes as a digital code only, where on the Xbox One, you actually have it on disc, which is the one advantage of the Xbox One that I know of. Battlefield Hardline, I love. I've got to get back to it. This is a great concept. Even the multiplayer, I've watched tons of videos of because it looks fun. It's a really, I like the cops and robbers concept. It's very cool. Uh, this is a great game. Uh, 20th anniversary Duke Nukem World 3D Tour. Very cool. There's the Riptide, which I just mentioned. Zombie Army Trilogy, about the day it came out. Uh, since then, I got the physical edition. My good friend Angel sent me for Christmas, sent me the Zombie Army Trilogy on a physical disc, just like I bought the physical dish of, uh, disc of the Wolf and Sign the Old Blood as well, even though I bought it day one digital. Um, and then I got Super Star Wars. I started to play. I couldn't even finish the first level. I just got my ass handed to me. It's so hard. I can't believe I actually almost beat this game on there. Super NES. It just about killed me. SteamWorld Dig, a really fun, cute platformer. I would really like to get the sequel of this, too. It, it, these are the kind of games I really like. Once you give them a chance and you see how good the mechanics work and how fun the, little, the world environment is, it's a real delight to play these kind of games. So anyway, that's my PlayStation 4 games. It gives you a quick look that, you know, and I believe this, I want the new hit, the first season of that Hitman I'd like to get. Uh, there's some racing games at Gravel. I'd definitely like to get that in the DLC for that. There's a few other games out there. I don't know what, the, I can't remember what they are. There's three or four PlayStation 4 games I want. I just haven't had the money to get them, but I'm just happy to have those. Um, I'll quickly hear while I'm talking show my Xbox 360 games, which I filmed right before I filmed this. <clears throat> I've got a lot of games, and it's funny, back, you know, with the Xbox 360 in 2012 and 13, my God, I would buy three to five games a month, every single month. There were so many great games. They were so good. And I miss the, the people that would make the try new IPs, even the Army of Two, Devil's Cartel, um, you know, Rogue Warrior with Mickey Rourke, a lot of games that got kind of really lackluster reviews. I found a tremendous amount of fun, frankly, more fun in those games than I do in some of these newer ones. So this is why I'm doubling down and really working hard to, to build up my 7th gen collection. I'm pretty much there. i got maybe another 20 odd games left to get for the 360 and PlayStation 3. Maybe another 20 to 25 for the original Xbox. I'm so close now. I'm so close. And I'm going to do my best to try to wrap those collections up because I think the future doesn't look great. Like I said, I'm going to hang on as long as I can. I love Rage 2, what I've seen of it. If it's offline, I don't know why the devs won't confirm it. I keep watching all these previews and interviews with the devs. They never say. They won't say. And I'm nervous because I know Bethesda sees the money in this online shit, and I think that's where it's going to go. But we'll see. If it's offline, I'm all over it. I'll, and I'll get a hundred and something hours in that game. At least. I love the first Rage, and I know I'll love the second one. You know, I, I'm excited about... Uh, the Cyberpunk 2077 looks good. There's confirmation at single player. Again, we don't know. And I've heard some rumors, some people say it's going to be online, even though there's no multiplayer. I've heard other people it says that think it will be offline. Again, I don't know. I want confirmation. I did get confirmation on the Metro Exodus uh, that it will be. And even that, they didn't really say offline, but they clearly said single player. So I, there's many games that are... I saw at E3 that I'm excited about. I just... I have to 
play them offline. That's <clears throat> that's my my feeling on it. That's that's just how it is. Uh, I appreciate a lot of the supportive comments. I know some people uh, like my E3 impressions, and a lot of people were really didn't care for them, and that's fine. We're not going to all like the same things. Um, there were a couple threads that got really off the beaten path, which I had to delete. There a couple, someone commented on my thing with some views contrary to my own, which I respectfully responded to, and then another mutual friend jumped in, and I got in this long, you know, obtuse uh, argument, which got way into politics and stuff, and I just, I deleted the whole thread, because I don't want my videos and my, people read my comment section, and I don't want it to be about that. I don't want to talk about politics unless I absolutely have to, and believe me, I, I don't want to lose viewers or subs. I, I, I don't want to upset people and rub people the wrong way with my persona, with my feelings. <clears throat> but at the same time, i got to feel free to be myself and to speak what I feel is the truth. Not everyone sees that as a truth, but I have to be true to myself. And that's why I'll never be a big YouTuber. Because I'm too controversial, I'm too opinionated. I have a lot of people that respect me for that, even though they don't agree with me. I have friends that love multiplayer, and that's great. I, I, I don't want to take away your multiplayer. It's just that I see it, the gaming going in a future that's going to give you nothing but multiplayer. And even to play the single player games, you're going to have to go online to their servers, and that just flies in the f face of game collecting and, and, and owning these experiences which to me are so precious. I don't know why so many can't see my point. It's like they're incapable of seeing that. They're, Dean, I don't understand why you won't play the crew or this or that. It's like, look, I I know, I know you're having fun. You, you see it. You're looking at it for today. In the long term, let's say you want to return to that and you really were fond of that game, you won't be able to. I don't know how much longer they're going to support the crew one when they got the crew two. They're, they want you to buy and invest in the DLC and all that. So at a certain point, you know they're going to shut down the Crew 1. They're already shutting down other games that have already been out for the 8th Gen that were multiplayer games. What happened to that Evolve game with the monster? That's gone now. I mean, I don't even think you can even do that one. I, I, the Titanfall 2 looks good. I will buy that game just for the campaign. I've heard so many great comments. I, I don't care for the wall running aspect of it, but because it's gotten such good reviews and I've heard the single player campaign is so good, I want to support that game and buy it eventually. I just don't have the money to buy all the games. I'm kind of really watching my money right now and focusing on just the 7th gen and 6th gen collection until I get caught up. Once that's done, then I'll buy some of these other newer games like Gravel and uh, <clears throat> you know these other ones. But Anyway, that's my view, guys. Uh, I want you to. I want to naturally be well liked and respected, but I, I have to be true to myself. I don't enjoy going treading thin ice on controversial issues. I do not like to talk about politics. It's just so polarizing, and just I don't want to be ostracized for my viewpoints. So I just like to keep it on games. I just talk about the games and talk about the games that I like. So I want you to see that I, it's not like I hate games. There's a lot of games that I like right here. There's a lot more that I'd like to get. For the 8th gen, I just I have to wait until I get the money. So, hope you enjoy this. Just kind of a follow up to my E3 impressions. You can kind of see my taste in games and a little bit of my game collection. Thank you so much for watching. Leave in the comments how you feel about this whole thing and the things that I've said. I appreciate it. Thanks for watching and enjoy your games.